Okay, this is the final chapter in our programming course. Chapter 15, testing. All about test plans, test data, what to test. So testing, really, you've got to be confident that your program works as expected. Have you fulfilled the requirements? Also, you need to be able to test your code in little pieces. Now, so each of those control statements, that while loop that you did, did it work? That subroutine, does it work? Does it pass the right parameters? Do they work together? Do the units work together? That kind of idea. You need to be able to plan this and decide what kind of data are you going to use to test with. And then you need to document all this in some way. When you're testing, consider IPSO. Inputs, so test all your inputs. What keyboard inputs are there? Anytime a user touches your program in a way to bring something into the process, can you test that? Mouse clicks in between subroutines. When they're passing parameters from one to another, that parameter that's just being passed into your subroutine, does that work? Think about the processes. So it's not necessarily needing an input here, but the calculations that you're doing, are those correct? The way the subroutines are working together, do they work? The actual control structures in there, does that work? Do they work as expected? Storage, your variables, are they storing the right data types, the right values? Are you storing it in files? How do they look? How do the databases look? That kind of idea. And finally, test all your outputs. So all your screens, do they look as you wanted them to? Do they display what you wanted them to? Do the correct parameters come out of a subroutine? Are those what you wanted to come out? Do they look like what you expected? So to be able to document all this, you use a test plan. So before you get your hands on the code, plan it. What are you going to test? What are the essential parts that you're going to test? And then for each of those tests, you need to write down a number of aspects. They'll have a kind of common format, very similar to that. If you use that kind of format, you're not really going to go wrong. So each of these rows is a new test. And let's explain each of those columns. So you've got the test number, which is just a unique identifier for that test. Test 2, test 2.1, for example. Give a description of the test. You know, what's going on? Make it clear to somebody who's not you. So somebody who's an outsider, could they know what the test was all about? What kind of input are you going to use? What kind of data is going to be used? And we'll, we'll explain a little bit more about that in the next slide then what do you think should happen? So if it all goes correct, as you've planned, what will happen? Run that test, take a screenshot of what actually happened so you can prove that you did the test, and then write down what actually did happen. Was it the same as the expected outcome? Now, if it's not, you're gonna to need to write down what improvements to make. Otherwise, you can just say there was no improvements to make. The kind of data input, the kind of test data you need, there are three types that GCSE uses, and I remember it with the text model, the T-E-X. First type is typical, the normal data, what you expect. So imagine you had a menu and it had five items you could choose. Your typical would be somewhere slap bang in the middle at, say for example, your menu choices were one, two, three, four, and five. Choose menu item three, okay? Nicely in the middle, does it work as you expect? The next one, the E is erroneous, it's incorrect. So if you're expecting an input one, two, three, four, five, Type in 6, 600, unicorn, anything like that. And the final type is the extreme or boundary. That's right on the edges of what's acceptable. So again, if you're thinking of five options that you need, choose option one or option five and see what happens there. So let's go for an example here. This is the Magic Squares game from Chapter 8, which provided the sample code. Those of you who are doing the extension work will have had a go at that Magic Squares game. So go and see how I've done it compared to how you've done it. But these tests here will be a good example of how you could do a typical test plan. So yeah, we have test number one. We're testing if the actual board displays correctly when you open up the program. So there's no input required at this point. Write down what you expect will happen. So in this case, you think you, know, you have an eight by eight grid and you're gonna have all the letters and the numbers in the right place. And you also will hopefully expect to see an X somewhere where the player has started. Then run it, and that's the screenshot below, and then write down the actual outcome, what you think happens. In this case, the board has displayed correctly. Though it's a bit weird with the text on, on the side. I would put that as an improvement, really. The instructions to the player should be below the board game so it's clear. So there you go. So that's what we do with that. Test two is where you've just made that improvement. So again, you're still testing whether it opens correctly, displays everything. There's still no input. You're expecting it to have an eight by eight grid, but you're also expecting now the instructions to display below the grid. Actual outcome, once you've run it and taken a screenshot, is exactly as expected. So great, no improvements to make. Test three is all about trying to check movement. In this case, it's the vertical movement. And we're going to use some erroneous data here. So we're expecting them to type in U, D, or S. And we're going to type in X. So what should happen is there should be an error message that comes out. That's the expected outcome. So when you run it, take a screenshot, you see exactly that. There's not a valid option. So that's what you expected. No improvements.
Test number four, again, is the vertical direction again, but this time we're going to give us some normal data. We're actually going to put either a U, D, or S. So type in the U. Program, what we expect will happen is it'll just ask you then for how many squares to move, which it does. No improvements to make. Test number five is an extreme data test. So assuming you've said what direction you want to move in, this is now going to ask you how many squares to move, and we want really an extreme data, so right on the extreme edge. And you see here, and in the preview examples, when we do this data input, we write down exactly what test data we're going to use. We don't just say extreme data, we say extreme data was seven. We don't just say normal data, we say we're gonna use a U. The expected outcome will be that you'll type in the number and then it'll ask you about horizontal movement. And with the, once you've run it, taken the screenshot, you can see that's exactly what happened. That's test plans. That's test data. That's testing. So what do we do today? It's important. Testing is vitally important to make sure your program is expected, make sure people have confidence in your program. When you're thinking of what to test, use the IPSO model, the inputs, the processing, the storage, and the output. Think about all the inputs that can be made. What are all the different screens for the outputs? What's being stored where? And how's that all being done? Try and test all of those bits. The more you can do, the better. Document each of those tests in the test plan. And when you're doing each of those tests, if you can, make the three versions of it. Try and use some typical data, some erroneous data, and some extreme data. Right, well, that's the end of this chapter and the end of the programming course. As usual, if you need to get in contact with me, you know how to. Drop me a line. Cheers.